Hey, this is Dave and welcome back to our channel. Today we want to continue our short segments on trim tags. We've had a lot of requests from our subscribers, so we want to answer some of your questions. So to revisit trim tags, this will be a, a series of videos that we're going to go through. It's almost impossible to cover all the anomalies and nuances with trim tags, fender tags, or body code tags. People refer to them as different as different items, the factory, the corporation calls them body code tags. And there is a definition that was found in a parts manual. Body code plate is located in the left front fender side shield, wheelhouse, on compact sport and utility models, and on the left hand side, the upper radiator core support on full size models. So what it is, this is probably one of the most important questions that we receive from many people is what is it? So, and what it is not. So what it is, it's used by the body shop to properly configure the vehicle. Understanding whether it's a two-door, a four-door, a station wagon, a Hemi, a convertible, etc. So as we, as we spoke about in the past, a trim tag is predominantly used in the body shop. And the codes that are often found on there, some plants are different, but in general is anything that has to do with the body shop, such as drilling, stamping, piercing, welding, grinding, paint, stripes, etc. Now, as I stated, this changes through the year and it changes by models. You know, in general, when you look at the uh, late 1960s and seven, early 70s cars, very few plants will call out wheel chrome. Wheel chrome is fit at assembly, so that's something that, would, that could not be pre-drilled in the body shop. Keep in mind, one of the most important things is most plants have unique demands that may vary occasionally. Codes appear and disappear during the model year. If production is having a challenge with a particular component, maybe it's not being properly configured in the body shop, that could appear on the tag and will disappear from the tag. It varies by plant. So the two items that go into the body shop are certainly the body code plate, and often you'll have a piece of paper that is that resembles very close to this one here, which is called a body and white data sheet. Now you can see from the scale of it, there is a trim tag and here is the body and white data sheet. This is approximately the size. This particular one was found on a car that we owned that was actually inside of the cowl. We removed the cowl screens, 1970 Challenger, we removed the cowl screens and in there was the actual piece of paper. It was extremely tattered as you could imagine and deteriorated. We do have a couple of those in our archives, which we will share with you in future videos. But just to give you an idea, again, this is a body code plate. So what comes out of the body shop is the tag. This piece of paper goes along with it. This piece of paper, often you'll find a few more codes on there. Bill date, Devon, car line, vehicle identification, sequential number. So looking at the body code plate, now this is a pretty general measurement. Most plates are almost identical when you're in the serial production, but what you have to be cautious of is that these characters are hand-tooled characters, so there could be slight anomalies in the dimension, the look, the positioning. So just be very, very careful when you're making a judgment on a tag whether it's in a factory original or it's a reproduction. And there are plenty other uses for these tags. N96 prep line. This is, a, this is from a Lynch Road vehicle, 1970. So this was a tag that was put on a vehicle. Like most Lynch Road tags, they were hung from the roof rail on the vehicle. And that identified that this would have to go to an N96 prep line. What the M96 prep line was because of the complexity 
to install you know the air grabber onto a vehicle that would be taken off to a separate prep line or air handling line you could have two trim tags here's an example of a second trim tag here's an example of an inspector tag i'm sure we're very familiar with the trans am tags all the aars and challenger tas had those Hemi fenders, 1970. This was placed on the vehicles when they started to roll the fenders to make people aware of it. Hemi engine. These tags have been found under the seats of 66, 67 vehicles that were in St. Louis assembly. Special, special paint, special order. These are special order cars or what they referred to in the plant as sock cars, SOC, special order cars. This is a this becomes a novelty tag for some people, and what they do is they put this on their car. Typically, this tag would be, would be found on an emergency vehicle, a police car, something along those lines that would require special paint. It wouldn't have the normal paint scheme. So while we're talking about tags, something I want to point out that differentiates an average restoration when a car is being restored from a professional restoration. So this is a, as you can see, this is a trim tag secured down by its two screws. If there was a second trim tag, it would go in this position. Now this position on the left-hand inner fender are holes that are partially pierced, but not all the way through. So on a good restoration, you'll always see these partial now it varies by make and model. However, you'll always see these holes partially drilled through. And of course, this is on an E-body. This is the inner bracing. These are the weld points, and that's very apparent. And to the left, left side of the tag, left side of the fastener, that is a hole. And that is, if a car has air conditioning, this is where the clamp goes for the pressure hose. So again, rough dimensions of the tag, and certainly there are various tags that are found on different vehicles. So we want to look at just the variety of tags. Now these are mostly 69 and 70 tags, and that's what we're going to talk about in this segment. Typical intro tag, Jefferson Assembly. You can see slight, slight differences, 69, 70. Here is a Jefferson 1970. You can see a few differences, 69 to 70, but some of the common things, if you look at the positioning of B51, G11, B41, G11, very similar positions. You can also see the inspection stamp right here, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. St. Louis tag, 69. Belvedere assembly, 69. Amtramic Assembly 69, there you can see the inspection mark, the inspection mark, and of course these are body shop inspection marks. Los Angeles Assembly 69, inspection mark, 71, inspection mark, folded corner and inspection mark. If you notice this one as well, fold, folded corner, inspection mark, and then this one is Windsor, and there's no inspection mark on the Windsor tag. So as you can see, tags vary by plant and year. And we'll begin covering each plant individually, but we just want to sort of start out with this particular overview. Lynch Road Assembly, 1970. See the layout? Interesting enough, if you look at this one, January 9th production, December 3rd, you can see that the actual numbers are run together. This is, this is a real tag. Interesting enough, December 4th, one day after, the numbers are not run together. But interesting enough, the W and the M look a little smaller than normal. So unless you had all these tags to compare to each other, you could assume 
that this, that one of these tags is not proper. Something I want to point out, look at the position of the R, the inspector R. 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 So whoever Inspector R was, they were pretty darn consistent of exactly where they stamped that tag. And as we were talking about Lynch Road tags, and I know I've showed this to you in the past. So the Lynch Road cars, and this is from an advertising brochure for actual taxis. You can see the large build sheet on the front of the car. And right there is the trim tag hanging from the roof rail. And that's often what happens with the Lynch Road, Lynch Road tags. If you find a survivor Lynch Road car, I could almost guarantee that the tag will not have much paint on it. So to continue on, here's a Hamtramck 71, Windsor Assembly 71. Again, you see this blank spot. That's something that you want to look for. It's a characteristic that should be present. Los Angeles, 1971. St. Louis. Something I want to point out on the St. Louis that 69, 70, 71 and up, very rarely do you not find a number one, which is a three character stamp. We'll talk about that in a second. And number two is a punch through character. So stamp and punch through. St. Louis tag. Here is an aftermarket. The font, everything looks absolutely spot on. Everything looks everything looks good. However, no stamp, no punch through. This tag that I just want to spend a second on, it's not very clear. I apologize. However, one of the items that you always want to look for on a tag is when you get into the A, B, C, etc. codes, they read right to left by line, and they are in alphabetical order. So if you look at this particular tag, I'm not sure who made this, but you know, this 811, not even sure what that is. Then you get into the date, then C16, C55, C93, then D13, D53, those are never on a tag, G31, G33, then we get up into the H11, H51. I'm sure, I'm sure what they were thinking there. Um, L05, W22 wheels would never be found on a tag. So, and then end. Something else I want to point out. If you look at these tags here, and again, I know there's a lot to talk about, and we're drinking from a fire hose, but if you look at a Lynch Road tag, there's no end. This is the Los Angeles tag. There's an end, signifies the end of the codes. There is an end. And generally, what you're gonna find, if it's a proper Amtramic assembly, when you get into 7071 and up, you're gonna start seeing EN1 or EN2. That's line one or line two. We have literally thousands of tags. These are just a few that we have that we pulled out that we use for analysis, discussion. We have conversations with our subscribers about these tags. And one thing I want to point out again, as we talked about the St. Louis assembly tag, here is a 69 St. Louis tag. There is the character punch through and there is the three digit impact stamp. 1970 Hamtramck, Inspector Stamp, EN1. In a subsequent video, what we'll talk about are these inspection tags. And these inspection tags are not on all cars. I mean, certainly you have, you know, the ones that are typically found on a Los Angeles car is a small one. The other ones are found on Hamtramck cars, found on Jefferson cars, and of course we have a whole box here that we'll go through and give you an idea what some of these are used for. If you're in need of an inspection tag for one of your vehicles and you're looking for an original one, 
reach out to us and we'll see if we have any left and we'll certainly uh, see if we can't marry you up with one of these. These are other tags just running down, give you some idea on what we, uh, on what we study. And again, we're always studying the fronts, the backs, you know, we have blank ones. It's not uncommon to find a blank one on a two tag car, especially coming out of Lynch Road, 1971, that seemed to be commonplace. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Stay tuned for this channel. There'll be plenty more videos about trim tags. This is just the start. And as always, I'm sure you're aware of it in our body of knowledge. There's information on trim tags. Help yourself. Or you can reach out to us. So feel free to order one of these up. It walks you through much of what we've been talking about in this video help you better understand your tag, other tags. So if you like this content, please subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. We will provide you the best and most reliable information on trim tags moving forward. Thank you very much for subscribing. Please share with the Mopar community. Send us any feedback that helps us better offer you a service, an educational service. Thank you very much for watching.